Hello, good day, and welcome to the Tannis Fiber Arts YouTube channel. I am a hand dyer, a hand knitter, a lover of all things yarn and fiber arts, and today I'm talking about my new toy, the Centro Knitting Machine. So this is going to be an episode entirely dedicated to my first impressions of this machine because I've only had it for less than a week, but I've had, you know, several days to play around with it, get to know it a little bit, and I've got so many thoughts, I even took notes, <laughs> and I have a lot to talk about with you. Now, this video is probably going to be primarily helpful for knitters, you know, if you're already a hand knitter and you're considering getting a machine like this, I'll talk you through who I think it would be good for, um, what it's useful for, pros and cons, stuff like that from a hand knitter's perspective, because that's where I'm coming at it from. Um, I have heard, I'm not on TikTok, but I hear that these are, these are huge on TikTok apparently, and I suspect that if you're coming at it from that, approach from from there sort of that world not the fiber arts world like the TikTok world and maybe you're not a knitter but you want to use this to learn to knit or like to be a knitter it's a totally different thing right so I'm coming at it from the point of view of a hand knitter and the first disclaimer the first thing that I have to say about it is this is not a substitute for hand knitting like the results the process the um yeah, everything about it. I mean, I'm not saying that in a bad way. I just mean it's a completely different thing because I suspect that a lot of my hand knitting friends are going to be like, ah, oh, like that's, that's cheat knitting or that's like, you know, you're removing hand knitting from the, like with the hand from the process. And it's like, yeah, because it's a totally different thing. I mean, I think it's maybe like if you're a painter and you paint landscapes and then you go and you take a photo of a landscape, you're not like turning your back on paint, painting landscapes for the rest of your life because you've now got this one photo. It's like photography and painting are two totally different art forms. Literally, that's how I feel about this. So with that out of the way, I'm not, I'm going to try not to constantly talk about like how it's different from hand knitting. Just believe me that it is. It's just not the same thing. So just because you like one doesn't mean you're going to like the other. And yeah, I don't know if anybody's watching this thinking that they're a hand knitter and they're going to replace their hand knitting with this. It's not going to scratch the same itch. It's not the same thing. So I've said my piece on that. So what can you do with this? I'm going to show you a couple things that I've made. First of all, you can knit... Um, yeah, I'll show you a couple things that I've made and then we'll get into a bit more of the nitty gritty. Here are two hats. Here are two hats that I made on this knitting machine. All in, I timed myself the other day. It's 25 minutes of actually cranking the hat out. Um, and then factor in probably 10 or 15 minutes surrounding that for the finishing of a hat being cinching up the top to close the top, sewing on the pom-pom. I love to steam block everything. So like all in, let's say I spent about 40 minutes, start to finish, got myself a hat. And it's pretty cute. My kids in particular love them um, because they made them themselves. This one I made with my daughter. This one I made with my son. My son actually dyed this yarn as well, and I'm going to get into that in a minute. Um, but yeah, so you can crank out a hat in 40 minutes, which is, you know, something, something. That's knit in the round on this circular knitting machine. So it has, um, oh, it suctions the table. So as you crank it, it doesn't move, which is great, but it just makes it hard to lift up. Um, there it is. This is a 48 needle machine. It comes in multiple sizes. And the thing about it is you can't change the circumference. That's the size of your tube if you're knitting tube. You can also knit, so there's a switch here, T or P for tube or panel. So you can also knit a panel, and here I knit a panel. Um, you can do it as big as 48 stitches, you know, use the whole thing going back and forth, or you can make it as small as you want. So this one, I think I did a 20 stitch panel. And I just stopped and started, you know, where I wanted to, going back and forth. 
And so those are the things that you can do with it. Um, knit a panel or knit a tube. But as I say, it's a fixed size tube. You can't knit a tube in, in different sizes. And um, it's a fixed weight of yarn. And this is something, as knitters, you guys are going to really understand this. This. And this is something that I've watched a bunch of YouTube videos from people sort of talking about the Sensual Knitting Machine, and a lot of people haven't mentioned this, and I suspect it's because they're not coming from a hand knitting background where gauge is everything. <laughs> so this machine has a sweet spot in terms of the gauge of yarn that it will knit with, that it can tolerate. It's really, I don't want to say finicky, because it's not difficult. It takes some trial and error. But there's this little gizmo here that has three holes in it that guides your yarn. It, it tensions your yarn. You put your yarn through there, through this little crack there, and then that's the what determines the tension. Of course, you can also hold the strand and sort of manually tension it with your hand. But this is your tension. And you really want to get your tension just right to avoid... Um, potential problems. Those are the only problems that I've run into is I realized that initially my tension was too loose and stitches were kind of sloppy and kind of falling off. So then I tightened it and then if you do your, and by tightening it, it just means you go into like a smaller hole or you, you hold it tighter or whatever. You just make it have a bit more tension as it's going on the machine. But if it's too tight, you're going to come into different problems as well, right? So you want to get your tension just right for the machine to work well. And this machine, they recommend worsted weight yarn. I've tried it with DK, that was also successful, but it comes out to the same gauge. And that gauge, for me, where it's landed happily, the most success I've had is at 16 stitches in four inches. That's four stitches per inch. Now, a standard worsted weight gauge would be five stitches per inch and a standard DK weight hand knitting gauge would be 5.5 stitches per inch. And so this machine, regardless of the yarn you're using, in my experience, you're getting four stitches per inch, which means that it's really loose. It's, it's quite loose. So you're not getting, and I haven't tried going in with a really, with a bulky yarn that I, like for example, our Pure Wash Chunky yarn would knit really happily at 16 stitches per inch. It would, I don't think it would work in this machine because this machine wants worsted weight or DK weight. It doesn't want <laughs> chunky weight yarn. And um, it would just, I think that the stitches would fall off. It's got these little pegs that they've got to hook on one and off. And I think the bulky or chunky just wouldn't cooperate with it. That's my feeling, having not experimented with that yet. I suppose I could have, should have before saying this. But I've also had that feedback from people who have the machine, people who've left me those types of comments. Um, in response to other people leaving comments on it posted it on Instagram or in I've seen a bunch of YouTube videos, etc. I'm pretty confident in saying that it wouldn't cooperate well with Chunky. So to me, that's just sort of a really, that's kind of like a big deal because I can use this machine to knit with worsted weight or DK weight yarn, but not at a gauge that I find particularly useful. For example, if I were to knit a garment at this gauge, it's a really loose garment like that. This to me, I mean, it's gonna have a lot of drape. Um, it might snag easier. You know, normally if I grab a worsted weight yarn to knit a sweater, I'm looking to knit it at, you know, five stitches per inch, maybe four and a half, maybe 18 stitches in, in four inches, but I would very rarely would I, I would knit I'm looking at it now and these stitches look really nice. It looks good. But yeah, if I grabbed my needles and started knitting and came up with this, I'd be like, oh, it's nice, but it's a bit loose. I'm going to go down a needle size. I want this to be a bit tighter. So that's just something that I'm a little bit hung up on about it. Um, the gauge thing is, it's, it's interesting. And so the way that these hats are made is you knit a whole tube, crank, 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 this uh, knitting a tube I find a lot easier and um, it's easier than knitting the panel. It requires the panel you have to take note. You you know you've got to go one way and then rope and then wind you crank the other way. You can't just kind of zone out and just keep cranking until you're done. You've got to pay a bit more attention when you're doing the panel, whereas you have to pay zero attention when you're cranking out a tube. So 
you crank out a tube. For these ones, I just used the entire skein of worsted weight yarn. It gave me about 120 rounds on this machine. Crank it out. Um, then you've got a long tube. You cinch both ends, just, you know, pull it so that it creates a puckered top. And then you push one end into the other. So now we've got a double knit hat. You, you know, you use your hands to tie them together. The, I put pom-poms on because pom-poms are fun, but they're not mandatory. Like, it doesn't leave a big hole. You could totally wear it without a pom-pom, and it would still be wearable and lovely and look like a finished hat. And then you can, so if you can see here, it's double. The brim is double. So this is a really warm, it's two layers of worsted weight hat. And then because of the length that this ended up, because I, I was just experimenting and I just used the entire skein, it's definitely long enough to get you, give yourself a nice cuff. And then you've got, it's really stretchy, really warm, and I think really quite cute. Um, if you did it shorter, you wouldn't have to fold up the cuff. You know, it could just be a beanie like this. This beanie would look a little bit ridiculous, a bit too slouchy. But if it were a bit shorter, then you could just wear it as a beanie without the double cuff. It's still plenty warm because this is four layers of wool over your ears. It's a nice warm hat. Both my kids have worn them. They're, they love them. They're particularly proud of them because they did it themselves. So that's like a pro. That's something to say for this machine for sure because they're totally capable of cranking it. The setup and the takedown is something that my kids are seven and four, the two who were really involved in this. They just did the cranking. They did not set it up or take it down. I think they could set it up. I think they'd have a harder time removing just because you have to use a, um, a needle and sort of make sure you catch every stitch so the thing doesn't fall apart. But it is very simple for an adult. For a four-year-old, it might be a bit much, but um, the setup and takedown couldn't be simpler. And there are a lot of YouTube videos on how to do it. There's even, the, I think, the one information that comes with it. The, the box that this comes in has one piece of paper with your instructions on how to put it together. And how to put it together is just these legs come separate. You just there's you pop, pop them in, and then there is one screw. It comes with a screwdriver, so you don't have to run around and find it. Like it could not be easier to set up. And um, on the piece of paper, there's a link to a short, like a one minute video on how to get started. And I watched that and I did it. And then there you go, you're ready to go. Like it's really that simple. Um, yeah, and it's been fun. Now, this is what the tension thing, the gauge was the first thing that I had on my notes to mention because to me, um, it's very relevant to somebody who thinks about knitting and gauge and stuff a lot. It's relevant. The other thing I wanted to mention is why I bought it. Why did I get it? I've had an interest in knitting machines for a long time um, because I'm a knitwear designer. I, I love knitting. I love playing with yarn in all manners of ways. So anyway, I just, I, I have an interest in knitting machines, but I do not have an interest in gear. Do you know what I mean? I'm not engineer minded. Um, I have a sewing machine and I use it and I like it, but like if something goes wrong, I have to call my mom. Like I don't know, I don't like figuring things out and problem solving in that way. And I've seen a lot of knitting machines that are big, flat ones that you go back and forth on and you've got all these, they, they intimidate the dickens out of me, okay? The thought of having to just kind of troubleshoot and manage something like that is something that's really uh, not appealing to me. This just seemed really approachable and really easy. And the reason I bought it, and the, the thing that it, its main function for me is for swatches. So for example, yeah, like if, if I have this skein of yarn and I'm doing a pre-order for it and we've dyed this custom colorway and I want to show you what it's going to look like knit up. I mean, I could just spend an evening knitting a swatch or I could spend, you know, 40 minutes and knit a complete hat and really give you an idea of what it's gonna look like. And so for me, that's the main function. This is what it, need to do. it needed to do for me to be worth it, and it does that. So as a yarn dyer, as a business owner, it's doing its job. I should have mentioned, it's just in Canadian dollars, I think with tax, it was about $125. So there are knitting machines that are hundreds of dollars, um, I don't know of any that are less expensive than this. It's plastic, you know, it's pink, and it's really affordable. 
and it does one thing. But I think all knitting machines are like that. There's not switching gauges, um, going from flattening in the round. There, there's things that knitting machines just can't. One knitting machine is not going to do everything for you. I remember visiting a designer friend of mine once years and years ago, and she had several knitting machines in her basement that she used, and it was super intimidating to me. And that's what I like about this one. It's just really approachable. And I only needed it to do this one thing. I'm not using it to like to, to make all of this, all of my, it, like it's not really a design tool for me, though I do hope to design some things for fun for myself you know, that I, that I make with this, but it's not like, I'm not going to start knitting the bodies of my sweater on this. And then, and then, you know, being able to um, do the yokes, like say I was doing a super colorful yoke sweater, something, if you're really proficient with your knitting machine and you have one that is not this one, I think, cause I think this would be pretty tough because of the gauge issue. If you had one that knitted a respectable gauge that matched your hand knitting gauge, you can knit like the beautiful yoke of a sweater and then when you're done that part and you just need to knit a stockinette body, you, you know, I'm going to say you pop it on your knitting machine. I'm sure it's more complicated than that, but you put it on your knitting machine and then you just crank away, whip through the body, put it back on your knitting needles, do the ribbing, and then you've just saved yourself, you know, hours and hours of work hand knitting. So that's not what this does. <laughs> just to make that clear, that is not what I'm doing with this. I'm knitting swatches, I'm having fun, I'm experimenting in another way with yarn, but I'm not replacing my hand knitting. Because also, as I say with the hats, there's a few things you could do with it, but like, you're not doing much more than this, knitting a stockinette stitch hat. It only does stockinette stitch, it doesn't do garter stitch, it doesn't do ribbing. My dog needs me. Stella, do you need a blanket? So as I was saying, it only does stockinette stitch. So if you're a lover, like I love to knit and I love a beautiful cabled hat, this hat just might not cut it <laughs> for every use. Do you know what I mean? Like, so this is not replacing all of my hat knitting. It's not like now I can crank out a hat and I don't need to knit hats ever again. Now what I can say for sure, I would never hand knit a double knit um, worsted weight, you know, I would never knit a hat in this style. I like the style, I think it's cute, I like to have this hat, but it's not something that I'm interested in hand knitting because for me it would just be really boring and not motivating. It's, so to be able to crank that out is cool. That's cool. So now I have a hat that I would never have knit if I didn't have this machine. Um, I'll just show you, this is a sample that I did in, and I actually, so you can sort of see this I did in DK weight and I used two different yarns. So you do this big tube and I'm just kind of uncinching it because I already cinched it. Okay, then you cinch it, push it through to the other side. This is awkward only because I've already cinched the other end. Normally this would go really easy. So now I've got two cinched ends and I would yeah, and actually, I mean, that's cool. It's two different colors, so it's sort of, you've got a two-colored hat, a reversible hat, you flip it in. It's a lot like the, that is old, the teak pattern, the Musselberg, in terms of its style, you know what I mean? How it's like double layered. And this one, in DK way, it looks great too. Like, it, it the, the fabric is nice, I gotta say. Even though I'm talking about the gauges being wider, looser than I would like, it, it's actually quite, I, I do like it. I, I think it is, it is functional. <laughs> It's functional but this one I haven't completed because I don't want this hat <laughs> this I don't like how like the color really pulled like you know I don't like the look of it I don't like how that's going I think there's better things that I can do with this yarn so I'm just gonna frog it and I'm gonna put this yarn back in my stash same with this I, I don't really have a need for a this particular swatch but I just wanted to experiment with the machine and that's something that it does that I think is really cool too is that you haven't wasted hours days you know, weeks of your time knitting. Imagine if I had knit this by hand, the amount of time that that would have taken me to knit this long tube only to determine that I don't like it. Whereas this just took me, you know, moments last night. Ah, don't love it, just gonna frog it. No, no harm, no foul. So I got to like, you know, have fun, play with the iron, learn something about the machine. And I don't feel like, it just requires so little of a time commitment from me. And I really like that because it's so different from hand knitting, right? If I commit myself to knitting 
miles and miles of stocking that stitch by hand only to then realize that I don't like the results. I mean, that's kind of devastating. So it's nice to remove that pressure, that's for sure. Um, and what I think I could do, okay, some ideas of other things that I would like to do. I've seen, so you can knit, you know, an infinity scarf, which would be really cool. And so again, for me, let's say I released a collection of like six new colors. I could just crank out a tube that featured all six of the colors and then I've got this beautiful six color stockinette stitch scarf. It would be a tube, so it would be double knit. It would be really, it would be a beautiful scarf. And again, I'd be able to show off all of my colors of yarn without spending two weeks knitting mindlessly away on a project that I'm not really motivated to knit because that's just not the type of knitting that I like to do. Um, and so for me, this mission, and then I'd have this item to show off my colorways with that I think would just be so useful for me. So, when I say it's useful for me, it's really, I think, pretty specific to the business. Because in order to make it useful for you in terms of like the number of hats that you're making, you need to make a lot of hats. And I already kind of feel like we've sort of maxed out on the amount of hats of this style that we need in my household. Do you know what I mean? Um, cool thing, hat, side note, my son wore his hat to school last week. His teacher went nuts for it, she really loved it. And so he came home from school and that afternoon we cranked out a hat for her because we could. And we gave it to her the next day, she was so appreciative and that was pretty cool. Like that's something that I would not be able to do without this machine. I would knit her a hat for sure because I love her, but um, not in an afternoon. <laughs> so, that was, that was a cool bonus. But I think I've seen a bunch of people have been commenting on my Instagram when I'm talking about it being like, oh, imagine the hats. And I'm like, yeah, imagine all the hats you can make. But like, do you need that many hats? Um, and then that leads me to sort of the next thing. I feel like I'm being weary of being too, you know, um, gloating about how cool I think this machine is for me because I don't think that everybody needs one. And one of the reasons, one of the sort of, I guess I'll call it a, a real con, is it's both a pro and a con, is the speed at which you go through yarn. As I was saying, I think I could do, I could easily, quite easily, I think I could crank an entire six skein scarf in a sitting, like in an evening. It would, you know, if one hat takes me about 25 minutes of cranking, Okay, do the math. That's just under three hours. But like, let's say you're watching a movie, you're cranking it out. So it's not nothing to knit, you know, crank for three hours and your arm would get tired for sure. So maybe I wouldn't do it in one sitting, but I could make a scarf in a day, six balls of yarn. Now, if we're talking my yarn, I don't even know what that costs. <laughs> worsted weight, one skein of worsted weight yarn, hand dyed merino is $34. So that times six, I will, I will leave that to you. That's got to be what, close to $200, right? Yeah, it is close. To, it is maybe $200. So that's like not a great value for your, your yarn. Do you know what I mean? Like I really like to, to, like I think that fingering weight yarn is the best value because you get the most time to spend with it, right? Um, as you're knitting and it's more versatile. You can hold it double, blah, blah, blah. Like I don't, uh, so. I just feel like you would start, and I'm not saying that everybody, you don't need to use only hand dyed yarn, that's for sure. In fact, most of the people that I see, um, the projects that I've seen on YouTube from with people using these machines, they're using craft yarn from Joann's or from Michael's or Walmart or whatever, because, and I would say that that's probably a big reason why, because the budget, the, uh, the yarn budget that you would have to, that you would need to have to, you know, consistently be cranking out hand-dyed yarn knits on this machine would be would be significant like you could crank through hundreds of dollars of yarn very quickly and so in that sense I find I find that really lends to the the um I was gonna say unpracticalness of it I suppose just because of you know the 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 amount of time spent for her money spent if that makes any sense. You know, you buy a skein of yarn for $10 at Joann's and you knit yourself a hat. You're getting days of enjoyment, hand knitting it. Then you get the enjoyment of wearing the hat. You buy that same yarn, you crank it on this. The enjoyment of knitting it is completely gone. But you do get the enjoyment of having the object. 
it's just something to consider because I know, um, you know, knitting is, <laughs> knitting can be, well, all crafts, all hobbies can be expensive and this would just make you tear through yarn. Now there's a lot of people who have huge stashes that they're looking to go through. There's a lot of people who, so the one thing that this has come up every, so many people have left comments for me every time I've mentioned it about how great it would be if you knit hats for charity. And absolutely, if you have a large stash that you're pulling from, again, I just can't help but think of the expense if you're knitting for charity and that's what you do with your evenings and you've got, you know, a couple hours every night. Well, the amount of yarn that you would go through and the amount of hats that you would make, you just have to watch your budget, I guess, you know, but that's that's up to you to decide how you want to spend your, your yarn money. Um, but that for sure, like if I... I'm definitely now thinking, you know, of going through my stash, finding any skeins that I'm not saving for a particular project, cranking out hats, donating them to charity, and that would be just like, that would be a fantastic use of the machine, right? So I wanted to touch on, yeah, the use value in terms of the yarn. I just feel like that's really relevant. So the types of things that I'm looking forward to exploring, I do want to make a big cushy scarf one day, just have to pick some colors and do that. Um, that's not exactly like a very creative or exciting project, but that's something I want to make. I've seen some really cute headbands, like where you crank out a tube and then you fold it and twist, and then it's like a headband with a twist at the top, which I think could be really cute. I want to experiment for sure with pan with more making the panels, the back and forth panels, and sewing them together. So because of my experience as a hand knitter, you know, the, and the way that you cast on and cast off. So I'm not going to get into like the nitty gritty of the, you know, specifically how I would go about doing it. But um, I would, you could, there's so, there's a lot that you could do with these, with panels or even tubes to make, to sew them together, pick up stitches, add hand knitting elements to it to make things like um, blankets, sweaters, um, so a blanket, yeah, a blanket, I would knit a whole bunch of panels and then sew them together. And I think you could do some really neat things with stripes that way, um, which is something that I, yeah, because I would never just set out to knit a huge stockinette stitch blanket. I mean, I just, that just is really boring to me. That's not something that I'm after, but I love playing with color, right? And so it, the, the finished object is something that does appeal to me but the process of making it is not worth it to me as a hand knitter. So that is something that I think this could be really fun with. I saw somebody, um, yeah, so blankets. And because I can, I have the hand knitting skills, you know, to pick up stitches around the edge, to knit on a really nice border, to because because it's only stocking at stitch, I've steam blocked this, but like it's gonna, it curls, like you can't leave the edges unfinished. Um, but it is really easy, the stitches are live if you, pull out if I remove the one strand that's sort of like keeping these from unraveling and picked up the stitches and you would have a pretty seamless knit if you were to for example make a bunch of panels sew them together pick up stitches around what you would make as your collar um, I was thinking of even doing like some panels so again though because of the limitations of the size you I, I couldn't knit I would have to knit two panels for the front two panels for the back and I was thinking of doing a tube for it, like a turtleneck, like a funnel neck. And then I would use Kitchener stitch to stitch them together. Possibly I could do tubes for the sleeves, but it would be a determined width, right? The width of to do a tube for this. If you didn't want your sleeve to be this width, you could do a panel and then stitch it together. You can do decreases to a certain extent in the panel format. Um, I think though that for me, because of the nature of this machine, that I wouldn't want to do too many finicky things, like the like too many sort of decreases and manipulating the stitches on this. If I'm going to do all that, I'm just going to knit it by hand. That's what I'm currently thinking. Um, but for me, it is pretty exciting to just kind of start thinking creatively about ways that you could use this machine. Because my first impression was that it was not very versatile, that it, there were a lot of limitations, but sometimes those limitations really push you to think creatively to overcome them, right? And so for me, that's a really neat aspect of it as well. Um, what else do I have to say? Who do I think this is for? So I think 
if you're a hand knitter and you're happy in your hand knitting life and you think that you can live without this hat, you don't need this machine. If this hat is the most appealing thing you've ever seen, if you hate knitting hats, I'm really mentioning the hat the most because it really feels like the thing that people use this for the most. Um, oh, I'm also planning on making just like a neck warmer for my daughter where I would just do a tube. Um, and then I would probably, I think what I'll do is I'll do a stocking and stitch tube and then I'll sew the tube rather than cinching it, pushing it in and doing like the hat way, I would use Kitchener stitch to join the cast on edge to the cast off edge and then you would just have this like continuous tube of stockinette stitch that um, would fit really comfortably. It's a really, it is a good width for her for like a, a neck warmer style thing. Um, yeah, I think that if you're somebody who is interested maybe in like making hats and selling them at a craft show, if it's something that you would pull out a couple times a year with your kids um, for something for them to do, then that's really fun too. This has been fun for me and my kids definitely. Another thing that I'm interested and in, I'm excited to do with it is make knits that I can embroider on. And the reason why that excites me so much is because I would really like to get into embroidery on knitting. I love the look of it, both, you know, small embroideries and then also using like thick wool to do like big embroidery on a sweater. But I just, I think the thing that has been stopping me from doing it is first you make the sweater, like you spend so much time making the sweater and then that's just the beginning, like that's sort of just the blank canvas for the real art project of this garment, which is the embroidery. And so somehow that sort of two step, like if I just had a sweater that I could embroider, and I'm sure that I do, but that's not the point. My point is I would, I think that, that if I could make a sweater, you know, in a weekend, like quite quickly with this machine as a tool, as an aid, then embroidering on it would feel more accessible to me. That could be personal, that might be just me, but I, I think that once I've completed an entire sweater, because I've never embroidered on a sweater before, that part seems like it's kind of, it might work out, it might not. It feels a little bit risky to me, and so to spend all this time hand knitting a sweater that I'm then going to use as a test for whether or not I'm good at embroidering on knits, that feels a bit more risky, but if the time it takes to make the sweater is reduced significantly by being able to do it on this with the help of this machine and then the the actual sweater is less precious to me and i think I, i'd be more willing to like really take some chances with the embroidery and really experiment i hope that makes sense similarly with the hat because i think to embroider on a hat um, which i love you know where you've got you know exactly like a hat like this and then you embroider on the cuff here you know something really cute um, I would, yeah, you've got, you've done a lot of work to knit, I don't know, no, no, it needs to be, a, maybe it's that it needs to be kind of a boring hat. <laughs> it needs to be a stocking and stitch hat where the embroidery will really pop and it probably needs to be again in like a solid color. So it's just not the most enticing project for me to start. I want to do the embroidery. I don't want to do the boring part of knitting the hat. Those are the types of things I'm thinking of. Let me just see. If I had any other notes that I wanted to mention. Um, no, I said it all. <laughs> I've said everything that I wanted to say. So I hope that this was helpful to some people, to some knitters who may or may not be considering buying this. Um, yeah, I do wish that it were cuter. That's just my personal opinion. I find that it looks like it's made for kids. It looks pretty cheap because I suppose it is inexpensive, you know, for what it is. Um, but all in all, I'm happy that I have it. I'm happy to add it to my collection of knitting tools and things that I can do with yarn. And uh, I'm excited to keep playing around with it. But it is not replacing hand knitting. That's for sure. <laughs>